Hello, welcome to a new spreadsheet and automation video in Practical Sheets. Today I'm going to show you how to do running totals in Google Sheets. That is having a month by month or year by year rundown of your sales and you can have the accumulated sales or adding any number you want, but always having the latest accumulation or running total. So we're going to see a couple of different formulas how to do it, not without thanking all of my Patreons. And you can download these and more than 100 videos in the Patreon page in the description below. Let's begin. So I have a very simple table with dates and units. And what I want to do first is to summarize my sales of units month by month or year by year to simplify and not have a very long video, we're going to do it month by month, but you could apply this to quarters, to years, even to weeks if you'd like. But let's do it by month first, and then we could do more complex second version. So how to bring the, the months in this case? There are several ways of doing it. I found that the easiest way is using a formula called end of month. If you start writing here E and then O, month you have the last day of a month before or after a date so this is very easy way to classify your dates by month and not having to use the month or the year function which is what i was used to use before because this changes it to a text or to a number in this case we're going to always have a date and this has a lot of advantages so the date will be this a2 and we're going to hit comma and we're going to hit zero to have the last date of february in this case let's hit enter and we could out of field if you'd like i'm going to give it a bit more of zoom so here it's my end of month maybe you don't want to have additional columns so this you could do it with array formula we could do it down the line okay for now we have my end of month and you could even change this the, the format to this to uh, to just showing the month or the year and the month this is if it's easier for you now we're going to take this end of month and we're going to group it using the unique function so here i have my table and just for simplicity sake we're going to do our running totals to the right but you could do it in another sheet so let's do a unique function and we're going to take all of this column and hit enter and we should sort it so f2 so f2 again a bit more of zoom i think f2 and let's sort this so i have from oldest date to latest date this is just a way you could do this manually of course but this is just a way to ensuring that you only have the months you have in your because maybe in one month you didn't have sales or you could just do this manually and have the end of each month where you're selling but this is an easier way a more dynamic way i'm going to bring this down and call this actually the end of month is here so i'm going to do this starting on d2 and use this as a month and that's it okay now second step we're going to bring just the units of that month how very easily because if we have this column here we could just bring with a sum if everything that corresponds to this date in the end of month so as easy as doing sum if and the range will be end of month the criterion will be this month and what we're going to add are the units let's hit enter and now i have added up for each month but what i right now what i want is the running total so again there are many ways of doing this for me this is the easiest way but if you'd like we could have another video where i show you how to use scan and reduce the, this is a very nice way of doing this because it does not depend on the date being ordered however it makes sense for the dates to be ordered now we're going to call this units running total and again it's very easy you're going to do sum if again but with a 
a change. So the range will continue to be, the range now is not end of month, it will be date. And I'll tell you why in a second. The criterion is where the trick, all of this 10 minute video boils down to this trick. We're going to do, the criteria will be in quotation marks, less than, close the quotation marks, and we're going to do here, end of month. So instead of saying that it has to be equal to end of month, I'm saying it has to be less or equal. It could be less or equal that the end of month. And what we're going to add, as always, are the units. Let's hit enter. And now I have my running tokens. Okay, so it's, again, very, very easy. And now you have your running totals. And again, the nice thing about this method is that if you want to do years, if you want to do weeks, if you want to do quarter, you could do similar things to this, maybe not with the end of month, with other formulas, but the structure is the same. The only thing we're going to change, so now you can leave the video and it's okay. We're going to dedicate the last minutes of the video to remove this end of month and do a much more complex formula. If you are okay with adding the end of month to your table, then that's it for me, that's it for you, thank you so much. If not, we could go a step further and build a bit more complex formula using the end of month inside my formula, so it will be a bit more complex. So let, let's continue. So I'm going to duplicate this sheet. This one is simple, or let's say a additional column, an auxiliary column, and here is no auxiliary column. So in no auxiliary column, what I want is remove the end of month, but I'm not going to remove it yet. I'm going to start step by step. So in my month, what I'm going to do is actually it's not that complicated. Okay, so we could do this with an array formula or with a map plus lambda function. Given that we're going to use some if it's better to use lambda plus map, I will guide you through it. So we're going to copy this formula and we're going to start with a map function. And the map function will take all of these dates starting in A2 and let's leave it up to A. And then we're going to use a lambda function. What map does is that it takes a range, in this case, all this column A and applies a formula to each of these cells, each of the cells in the range. So first, this 3 February it will do something, then 25 February it will do something. What do I want it to do? I want it to apply the end of month formula. That's it. So I'm going to take the date. Let's call this date. Be careful sometimes that with functions that if the name of your variable is the same as the name of your function, you may have some trouble. So let's say date x. That's it. Easier. Let's do comma. And we're going to paste our formula end of month, but instead of A2, you're going to use your date X. That's it, date X. Okay, and let's hit enter, and now you have it. Perfect, the thing is that you have here some unwanted values when this is empty. So, a couple of ways of doing this. Let's do the simple one, and here, inside my end of month, I will say that if date X is empty, then just don't put anything hit enter again and uh, let's look at it and it works perfectly excellent now i'm going to take all of this function and i'll try to paste it instead of my t2t to see if it works apparently it's working if i erase this it works here here not so much let's see what has happened so here i've also have my t2t so instead of t2t i'm going to paste it to a just be careful here that I have here A to 2 A and here I have C to C. So I have two incongruent ranges. So you need to start and finish always in the same number. So I'm going to change this for C2. Let's hit enter. This C to C, I'm going to use it also inside my map. So comma C2, 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 C. And let's call it, so this was the date and the other was the units. 
So let's call this date x and the second variable will be units. I like to put it on lowercase, although it doesn't matter. And here I'm going to change these four units. I'm going to drag this down again. And now, actually the complicated one was units. Units running totals is really, really simple and I don't need to change anything. And if I remove all of this, it continue to work, okay? And finally, you could also, if you don't want to drag this down, you could also include this sum if inside a map function, but I'll leave that to you. If you want me to do it, we can do a second part of this. So I hope this is useful to do the running totals. And we could do, in the next video, we're going to show you how to use very similar formula, but to include it in pivot table. It may be a bit uh, simpler than to have to use to do all this sort unique map. Maybe you just want to do a pivot table, but you also want to do the running total. So you need to use a custom function. I'll leave it for that video. Thank you so much, especially to my patrons. See you next time.